U.S.-Russia relations have been at their lowest point since the end of the Cold War, but President-elect Donald Trump looks set to change that. According to the Kremlin, Mr. Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke by phone on Monday and discussed a range of issues facing the U.S. and Russia. How could Mr. Trump shift America's policy towards a longtime nemesis? Here are three key flashpoints. Number one, Ukraine. Russia has faced U.S. and European sanctions following its annexation of Crimea in 2014 and its backing of separatists in eastern Ukraine. Let me say this about Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is an aggressor that does not share our interests. Uh, Vladimir Putin um, is violating the sovereignty of neighboring countries. Mr. Trump has suggested that Russia doesn't have a presence in Ukraine. He's not going into Ukraine, okay, just so you understand. He's not going to go into Ukraine. All right, you can mark it down, you can put it down, you can take it anywhere well, you want. he's already there, isn't he? Okay, well, he's there in a certain way, but I'm not there. You have Obama there. In a later attempt to clarify those comments... So when I said, believe me, Russia's not going into Ukraine, all right? They're not going into Ukraine. The person said, but they're already in Ukraine. I said, yeah, well, that was two years ago. That's, that's, I mean, you want to go back? You want to have World War III to get it back? That was during Obama's watch. Mr. Trump also said he would consider recognizing Moscow's annexation of Crimea, which most Western leaders have condemned as a violation of a sovereign nation. I'm going to take a look at it. But, you know, the people of Crimea, from what I've heard, would rather be with Russia than where they were. And you have to look at that also. Number two, NATO. Mr. Trump has been critical of the alliance and has suggested that his administration wouldn't support members that don't spend enough on defense. We're talking about tremendous amounts of money that we put in, now we're, and we're defending countries, and we're not getting reimbursed anywhere near the cost of doing it. His comments have created worry in Eastern Europe and the Baltic states, where there's growing fears of Russian aggression. And if the hard line the U.S. and NATO have taken against Russia doesn't sit well with Mr. Trump, he could derail the alliance's existing plans to counter Russian aggression in the region, like its plan to deploy 4,000 troops to the Baltic states and Poland next year, or the Obama administration's plans to send a heavy infantry brigade to Eastern Europe. Number three, Syria. Mr. Trump has said the U.S. should be working with Russia in Syria to defeat Islamic State. We have to uh, get along with people. We have to get along with certain nations, very importantly, because it would be awfully good to have Russia and others with us on major attacks on ISIS. But the Kremlin supports Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and has targeted opponents of the regime, which includes those backed by the U.S. In an exclusive interview with The Wall Street Journal, Mr. Trump said, Syria is fighting ISIS and you have to get rid of ISIS. So if the U.S. attacks Mr. Assad, Mr. Trump said, we end up fighting Russia, fighting Syria. The Kremlin statement Monday said the two men discussed resolution of the Syrian crisis and shared their views on fighting the common enemy number one, international terrorism and extremism.